Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we're obviously talking about this GTX 1060 3 gigabyte version and this is an OEM card which is why it looks so uh, puny especially when you look at the cooler attached to it compared to all the other 1060 cards including the Founders Edition cards that you would have seen out on the market. This is one that you would only see if you bought a pre-built machine and I believe this one is specifically from HP. So if you bought one with a 1063 gig in it, you may have seen a card come across that looks a little bit like this, but regardless, it actually performs basically like you would expect a 1063 gigabyte version to perform. So we're gonna take a look at this card put into my i7-3770 system, which is a fantastic value because I got this thing for only $65 combined with a $130 system. That's $195 for a really, really solid system. I was really hoping this deal would come through. Obviously it did. So let's talk about some performance and uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages of this used market that I sort of exploited in this case to get a really great system built. So this is the system completely put together. This is the PC that I talked about in one of my most recent videos where we have the 3770 and there was 16 gigabytes of RAM along with an SSD that's a 240 gig SSD. And the tower itself came with something like a GT610 or something, a graphics card that I had no intention of ever using. But the tower itself featuring everything in here was just $130. And at the time I had my eye on this 1060, which I was able to eventually snag for just $65, bringing the total cost again to $195 for this system. Now let's talk about some of the pitfalls of using the local used market, because obviously this is not an off the shelf deal that you could find on eBay whatsoever, unless you're just very lucky and you're just in the right place at the right time. For the most part, you're not gonna be finding deals like this online. You're going to have to find them in your local used market. Now you can use online tools, obviously, like I used Facebook for both of these parts of this build. But the local used market is where you get your best value deals. And this is also, by the way, one of the last times I'm going to talk about my used computers for a little while, just because I don't have any more coming in in the immediate future that I'm aware of. But the downside to the local market is that you require a lot of patience to get these types of deals or just you happen to hop on and be in the right place at the right time like I really was with both of these deals. And I was just fortunate because living in a small town, the local used market really isn't that hopping around here. So the fact that these components were available was a big deal. And in that regard, the local market might have actually played into my favor once these were posted because nobody is buying computers or at least computers aren't flying off the shelf in my particular area. So once these components were posted without a whole lot of biters, when I shot low ball offers on both of them, the sellers accepted and I had, out of this whole deal, I get a fantastic 1080p computer for under $200. Now, obviously with used deals and especially local used deals where you don't have eBay protection or anything like that, you do run the risk of either getting scammed or just throwing your money at something that you get home, it doesn't work and the seller disappears forever. That is definitely a risk factor when you're investing your money into the used market and it's probably a contributing factor as to why some of these components just don't sell nearly as high on the local market as they do on eBay, along with the fact that eBay just has a much wider reach. So with those factors in mind, if you're planning on building a computer this way, understand there are risk factors involved and make sure to fully vet the seller or at least as best you can so that you don't get scammed out of your money. But all that said, fantastic system. I did benchmark this system with a few games. Obviously, I already benchmarked the uh, i7-3770 here with the 960. But now we're going to look at a few games with a 1063 gigabyte card. And I would also encourage you in the footage here, keep an eye on the temperatures because the CPU obviously runs fairly warm with this CPU cooler. It's just not a great CPU cooler. In fact, I still may replace it before I sell it. I'm not really 100% sure on that. In gaming loads, it comes close to thermal throttling, but usually doesn't. I don't think I've actually observed a thermal throttle in a gaming load. It just gets fairly loud. And the 1060 actually stays a little bit quieter than I figured it would based on my past experience with single fan 1063 gigabyte cards, but it does still get fairly warm as well under a gaming workload. So with all that said and all that aside, let's jump into the few games that I did benchmark and check out just how well this thing performs. 
Overwatch was a predictably great experience on this particular system, averaging 143 FPS with a 1% low of 93 and 0.1% lows were still well above that 60 FPS mark at 69 FPS. There was no stuttering whatsoever to report here and the entire experience was fantastic. I very much enjoyed playing on this PC, unlike other budget solutions that I've looked at in the past. I couldn't honestly even tell that this was what you would call a budget system because the hardware in it is just so solid. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt was a far different story than Overwatch, at least at 1080p high. While we did still hit the average of 60 FPS, I usually like to see that number a little bit north of 60, and the 1% and 0.1% lows are less impressive at 37 and 19 respectively. And a lot of that sort of low numbers for those two statistics, the 1% 0.1% low come from loading areas as you walk around the map. There do tend to be in this game some stutter as it seems to load in a new area. So that definitely was encountered in this instance. And I did play around a little bit with lowering the settings down to medium instead of 1080p high. And when I did that, I was typically seeing frame rates more in the 80s than the 60s. So you definitely can get this game's frame rate up a little bit. And The Witcher 3 does still require a little bit of GPU and CPU power to run at those higher refresh rates. Still not an awful experience considering that The Witcher 3 is not the fastest paced game out there in the first place. Last up was Metro Exodus, and I do not have specific statistics for this first opening level in the subway. But what I can tell you is with 1080p high settings and tessellation off, texture filtering set at 4x, it seems to run really, really well with no real stuttering to report whatsoever here. And the frame rate was kind of all over the map, anywhere from the low 70s, every now and then the high 60s, but all the way up into the low 100s. So the frame rate did vary quite a bit here, but it was consistently well above 60, and it wasn't jumping from like 100 clear down to 60, and then back up again. It was usually a smooth transition, so the game actually did come across as running very well. It was a smooth experience, and I give it a thumbs up on this game as well. So there you have it, this garage sale. It actually wasn't even a garage sale, but this uh, garage sale PC, uh, at least the pricing of a garage sale PC is benchmarked and out of the way. This is the last you'll hear probably of this thing unless something else comes across that I really feel like works with it. But this guy is gonna be going up for sale in the very near future with just $195 in it. I should be able to turn a nice little profit and still sell it at a reasonable cost as well but i do actually need your guys's help with that because my money in it to me is just so much less than it's actually worth i'm curious what you would actually put this thing up for sale at if you were the seller here how much would you try to get out of this pc let me know your thoughts down below and of course if you like this video and you like some of these used price to performance videos give this video a like share subscribe comment all those things are very helpful you can follow me both on twitter and instagram at who's your hardware and as always i'll let youtube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch i'm shane with who's your hardware and i'll see you guys in the next video